I'm the king of rock. There is none higher. Sucker MC should call me sire. To burn my kingdom, you must choose fire. I won't stop rocking till I retire. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Alliance Ohio's favorite sports talk show, Raiders Zone. A lot different staff in the building tonight in the illustrious WRMU studios here at the Hoover Price Campus Center at the University of Mount Union. I'm really excited. I'm your host, Chris Golian, getting ready to chop it up, uh, as always, on Monday, talk about this weekend in sports and sort of what went down last week as well. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. I think we're going to be here on Wednesday as well, do a little bit of a special show. We're going to have a lot of fun as I wrap up my time as an undergraduate here at the University of Mount Union. And with finals being, you know, finals nearing, the schedule is very open. People are very willing to, to give up <laughs> their shifts. So um, I don't know exactly what we'll be doing, but we'll be announcing it on Twitter. So make sure you follow us at WRMU underscore sports. Right now, you want to see who's on the show. I mean, they're going to introduce themselves momentarily, but why not, why not see if you know them ahead of time? Go to YouTube, look up 91.1 WRMU, watch the live stream, see the beautiful faces of the gentleman in front of me. Guys, introduce yourselves. Uh, Brendan Devinney, uh, only original guest on tonight. That's but true. Glad to keep the you know show going. Absolutely. Original. Always, always appreciate. It. He, he's, he, like he's a regular. That's it. He's a regular. A re- regular. I will. Regular, I, w- no, I will. Original, s- regular. I was about to say. I will say. Unk has made appearances prior. His this is Brendan's freshman year. Unk's been here for four years as as have I. So I'll give it away that you're here. So, but he he's been on the show before as well. Your favorite re, uh, reoccurring guest star. Yeah, on yeah, that's yeah. true. That's, that's he's go. Unk is our guest panelist for maybe, sure. Maybe I'm a little offended by that. I think maybe <laughs> hey, been for a couple years, and this is my first time being on the show. Hey, everybody, everybody, I'm Barry Grant. What's going on? Looking forward to it. Let's have a good time. Yeah, I'm excited. Barry uh, Barry often asks me sports questions, oh, and yeah. we talk a lot, a heck of a lot about all of this stuff. So. Naturally, when looking to, you know, the ones and twos, they were down. The, the usual guys we go to for this show, they're, they're down tonight. Studying, illnesses, they're not ready to go. And so I was like, you know, who are we going to get out of the bullpen? Who are we going to bring up? And these these are naturally the names. Brendan is, is, is steady, steady as the wind. Um, he's try. he's always, always here. She, I don't even have to worry about getting a text that he's coming. I know that he is. He only texts me if he's not coming. And Barry and Unk, I just knew that that I could rely on on, on these guys um, procrastinating their academic work just a little bit longer. Little Much bit. Does that mean you <laughs> want your five bucks back. <laughs> <laughs> Much like myself, but we'll start just because it, it's one of my favorite topics: the NFL draft. Last week, absolute explosions <laughs> with with whether it was the quarterbacks, whether it was uh, some of the guys that fell. Some of the decisions that weren't made, some of the decisions that were. We're going to get into a little bit of it it all, but we're going to start with quarterbacks. Quarterbacks going early and often in round one specifically. You have Mayfield at one. You have Sam Darnold at three. You have Josh Allen at seven. You have Josh Rosen at 10. And you have Lamar Jackson at 32. Now, I will point out, out of the, what is it, one, two, three, four, five selected in the first round, Four of them were traded up. They, that, the, that team traded up in order to draft that, that guy. Now, people forget the Jets traded up way back when, very, very far in advance to the draft, and they got Darnold. The Bills traded up. Didn't give up that much to do it either. Smart move by them to get Josh Allen. The Cardinals traded up to get Josh Rosen. And then the Ravens traded back into the first round with the Philadelphia Eagles to get Lamar Jackson. So, you know, we've talked about these quarterbacks – Quite a bit, fellas. And so, you know, that being said, now that you know where their landing spot is, how do you feel about um, what are your thoughts on them and as projected NFL prospects now that you know where they're going, what kind of personnel they have around them, coaches, all that stuff? Brendan. Um, I was really hoping Jeep would be here to get into. <laughs> I, I agree. Mayfield talk with him. There's um, nobody else. After I saw no. his celebration on Snapchat, there's nobody else I wanted to talk to about this. But uh, he blew yeah. his voice out, I guess. Sore throat. He was so excited he hadn't excited. stopped screaming in days. Yeah, uh, That's what people were telling me out of Ketchum Hall. 
reports. Honestly, wasn't really surprised. Mayfield went number one um, nearing the draft. Those first like last couple of days before the draft, it kind of seemed like Browns were really right. going to go after. Him. And and usually when that it's and and I've heard this from various people, but usually the names that you don't hear are the guys that at the final hour like that. The names that you don't hear are the guys that actually get picked. Right. Yeah. And so I thought unquestionably it's Darnold. They've, the Browns have allegedly been trying to find the leak in their building to figure out who's always leaking stories to the media. They did a and pretty so, good job this year. Of yeah, not allowing that to happen. I mean, um, it was it was like you just said, literally. Yeah. Right before, <laughs> right before the draft, the night before, I can recall. Oh, now I guess they're taking Mayfield. And I didn't believe it. Yeah. Thought it was total smokescreen, silly yeah, season. Yeah, didn't smoke. didn't believe it at all. But it's very much real. It's going to be interesting to see if it's a good fit for him. I think it is. Um, you know. You know me, I've never really been a Mayfield fan in the fall and leading up to the draft, but after hearing him talk at the press conference, I kind of am now believing all of that off the field and on the field um, hijinks, if you will, are behind him. Uh, really liked his you know, interview at the press conference and whatnot, um, but that's going to be interesting to see how he plays out in Cleveland. Darnold, I think you know, he's a good fit with the Jets, I think, that system and the coaching staff there will help him out a lot Allen and Rosen that's a toss up not sold on Rosen I think he has way too much confidence that you know nine mistakes before before me uh, that's you know I think that's fair I mean you can't in those situations a lot of the time I say you know what's the guy gonna say mm. oh man they they probably shouldn't have (laughs) taken me at (laughs) ten. but I I get what you're saying though he, he did sort of Come come across a little arrogant yep. in in that in that interview. There's definitely a better way to handle that without you know being self deprecating, of course, as we joke here. But yeah, there was I I don't know if that's the limb I would go out on with the you know they do have some weapons in Arizona, but I don't know if they're a yeah. team that's ready for him to step in right away and win, and win I football be games. And if he's the starter next year, anyways. No, he probably I mean, will be. Mike Glennon got. Got a, his job taken away by Mitch Trubisky last right. year, and Sam Bradford can never stay healthy. I mean, oh, yeah, so he, he's sorry. he's going to play this season. That is un, almost unquestionable. Barry, or, or excuse or, me, did you want to say anything about Lamar Jackson? Oh no, I, I, he went second round. So. No, I mean thirty-two. He went the end. That was the last pick of the first round. Oh yeah, my bad. Uh, yeah. But still, I mean, I, he was going to go with that late anyways. Hmm. We might get into that. I have some questions. I don't understand sometimes some of the hate about him. But we'll we'll stick to the topic at hand. Barry, what are I, your thoughts on some of these quarterbacks? I don't, I don't know where to start. Going up into the draft, I thought they were blowing straight smoke about Mayfield. There was no way right before the draft they're talking about we're taking Mayfield, we're taking Mayfield. I, I, I wasn't hearing it. But I wasn't also buying into Sam Darnold. Either you know personally how I feel about Mayfield. I like him. He has some bite to him, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. He's a winner. I've seen him compete on top levels. But my thing, and we, we don't have it on here, I was I was really sitting here. How could you not take, to me, arguably the best player in the draft as Saquon Barkley at one? I mean, I understand that if you really wanted Mayfield that bad, that's fine. But he's sitting there right at four, if, especially if New York is sitting there talking about, well, if Sam Donald's on the board, we're going to take him and – the Jets obviously need a quarterback because they ain't had one in forever. So I think that if you take Saquon Barkley at one, Sam Darnold goes to um, goes to New York at two, and then the Jets end up with probably Josh Allen over Rosen, who I like more anyway. And then you get Baker Mayfield at four. But then you we talked about uh, last week how the reason why you buy into Mayfield and you take him – at one is because you're trying to send that message that you believe in Baker Mayfield. And you take him over Saquon Barkley. You take him over Sam Darnold. You take him over Josh Allen and Rose and these guys who are all projected to be so much better than him. And and I, I can understand that because you know that when during a football game, when a quarterback takes his head, he takes his number one quarterback out, you pretty much say to your team, well, hey, guys, what have we prepared for this week? It's not working. So we're going to try and win on a whim here, win on some luck. So – I do understand that, but I just I, I would rather see uh, Saquon Barkley taken. Sam Darnold, don't like it. Don't like him with the Jets. 
don't I agree. Like him. I 100% agree. Um, I thought I I was convinced that the Jets were going to go with Josh Rosen simply because of the whole Mark Sanchez thing mm-hmm. that they wouldn't go back to that well that USC quarterback well that I mean let's be quite honest you have to go all the way back to Carson Palmer to really find anybody that's had serious success yeah. and even you could debate about Carson Palmer's success mm-hmm. in the National Football League but Matt Leinart flamed out uh, Mark Sanchez flamed out Matt Barkley never became anything. Matt Castle won some games one year with the, you know, the New England Patriots just sort of not screwing things up. But you, and he didn't even play at SC that much. He was a backup there too. But you can't, I can't even find a guy. So like the track record means something. The track record does mean something. What makes it even worse is we always, I, I think that one of the biggest things that NFL takes into account is how are you as a person, as a man, I don't mean to disrespect Sam Darnold's manhood, but as I'm watching you play against Ohio State Buckeyes, you look defeated. You look like third quarter, you're just getting ready to mail it in. You know what I mean? I understand that you were getting lit up and your offensive line wasn't doing much for you, but that front seven was was just killing you, and you look like you you didn't want to be there anymore. And then you try to make up for it for – and your, what was his pro day? He's trying to throw in the rain and yeah. Yeah. saying like, you know, I'm, I'm not trying affected to get by, tri- yeah, I'm not affected by that kind of stuff. But when the when the fire is in your face, you don't know how to act. So I guess that water is your other option. <laughs> but that, that's why I liked Mayfield over Sam Darnold. I never thought we were taking Sam Darnold. I was gonna cry if we did take Sam Darnold. So I, I would I do pick uh, Baker Mayfield over him. Josh Allen. I heard people saying, and, and it, the more I mer- the more I go over in my head it does make sense the browns are going to draft josh allen as an apology to browns fans for not taking carson Wentz, because you got a guy coming out of wyoming which is a lower school it's not north dakota state or wherever carson Wentz is from but it's a lower uh a lower school and he has the size he has the intangibles he's big he's strong and he has that arm supposedly but there's that i'm happy he went to the bills i think that the bills are Looking to do something. I mean, we got their quarterback, Tara Taylor. I don't know who that other Peterman guy is. For yeah. Guy. Oh goodness. So the fact that he's even still there, I would have told. I would have told him to get McCarran, lost. So they'll win. One yeah. I didn't even know they got AJ McCarron. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah signed him like two oh, or three right, years ago. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I like Josh Allen. Maybe Josh Allen can learn from him. Uh, don't care for Josh Rosen at all. They said that he's got an arm on him, and I mean, we'll see that come game time. But I, I honestly equate Rosen to Lonzo Ball, but. But more so, he he's the one doing all the talking, not his dad, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah. what happens with Lonzo Ball, your dad's gassing you up, telling you you're this, you're that, and the other. And what you get a guy like Patrick Beverly got a little bit of bite to him, come and rip you a new one <laughs> earlier on in the year. LeVar's so, mouth, Lonzo. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, hey, Rosen, I would, I would, I'll calm that down, buddy. And then Lamar Jackson, I'll be honest with you, I'm not completely sold on him. I know he's a freak athlete. I know that he is – all this and that, and they equated to Mike Vick, and that's all good. But I will, I'll say this: I'll hold my opinion until the preseason, and we'll see how he's changed. But I'm that weird that guy that watches his tape, and I'm telling you, he's not good in the pocket. His feet are slow. He wants to get out of the pocket a lot, and I, I'm not seeing those quarterback throws. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. All around there. I, I don't know. The the thing with Lamar Jackson, and we're, I mean, we'll get to you, Unc, but the thing with Lamar Jackson is I think that anybody, uh, any rookie quarterback that is in a situation where they can sit and they have the, the skill sets like a lot of these guys have where they're definitely missing aspects of the game, I think that that's really important for them to have the ability to sit. There's no pressure for him to play. Oh, So not. all he has to do is learn. And so he can try and fail and practice every single day. And that competitor in him will want to play, but he's going to earn it and get there before he, you know, when he's ready. So I think that right now he's in an even better situation than he could have been before it. And I was intrigued just because, and granted, you don't draft numbers, but his numbers were impressive enough. The guy oh, has yeah. playmaking ability. What could he do if, you know, maybe he was given a little bit more uh, structure? And it was in a, you know a more pro style offense. What could he do then? There it is. So I, I'm really curious. I think you make an excellent point by talking about bringing up the preseason aspect mm-hmm. of things. Um, well, Michael Ankerich, whatever you'd yeah, like to be referred to as on the show. Um, 
You know, I'll start with Lamar Jackson since you're kind of talking about that. But I, I think it was ESPN said today in the last 10 drafts, I want to say, uh, in the first round there's been 17 running backs selected. Lamar or 18 running backs selected. Lamar Jackson has had more rushing yards in college than mm. 17 of those running backs. So the athletic ability unquestionable is there. Yeah. Can he be a Mike Vick? I mean, it depends. I, I, Mike Vick, we all knew, had terrific arm, too, to go along with yeah. Lakes. He was an accurate quarterback in college. I think the intriguing thing, though, is the quarter. Uh, he's behind Joe Flacco, a guy who can kind of get out of the pocket, at least he could, but he's more of a pocket passer. So I think that, from a learning experience, is very key. You know the guy can run and get loose if he needs to. But he, everybody's saying he lacks that pocket presence. Coming behind Joe Flacco, he might get that experience, at least know what to do in the situation, I guess. But um, So I like that aspect of him going there, uh, getting a guy to learn from. Uh, Mayfield, going along with Barry, you know, he, he has a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove that he isn't another Johnny Manziel. Um, he wants to be successful and help the Browns to win. Um, I think Tyrod Taylor is a good mentor as well for him. Yeah. Somewhat similar playing style. Um, I think that does help. And just I, I had to take care of a technical thing over there. But regardless, I think the Manziel comparison is literally the laziest thing ever because they're somewhat similar size. They both came out of the Big 12. And so, uh, well, not even. The Texas A&M was in the SEC in those days. So regardless. But I, I think that that's just such a lazy comparison. And th- now they're both with the Browns. So... You just don't have to. You don't have to do anything to try to draw parallels yeah. there. But if you actually looked at it, you know, and used your eyes, there's not. They're not alike not at all. Point. No, no, Mm-mm, at all. Um, you know, Darnold to Jets. It's he was gonna get picked, so I guess if he's gonna end anywhere, it's the Jets. Um, I do like Josh Allen. I feel like he can be a good quarterback. Uh, he can help. The bill is out. They're kind of in the win now mode. I want to say they just had a bunch of free agency signings. Yeah, they traded away some guys, but they have a good young nucleus. Right They're a now. playoff team. I yeah. mean, they, they were a playoff yeah. team. So obviously, I think his situation is by far the best to step into. He's want to talk about ready to win now. And realistically, if he has a good camp, there's no reason why he couldn't start. No. Yeah. Because McCarron is unproven, hasn't played enough. Peterman stinks. I don't need. I mean, Nate Peterman. He just stinks. Yeah. He should be holding a clipboard. Uh, and so I, I have a, a little bit of a, a love affair with the Buffalo Bills. You know, I, I don't know why, but like the just the Bills Mafia in the area of Buffalo. I feel like they they're one of the cities that needs it. Mm-hmm. They need it, and I love it. So you know, obviously last year losing the moniker of lovable losers because they've been close so many times, but they hadn't been to the playoffs pretty much since any of us were alive. Um, and so, but I I, I have a, a little bit of fanhood for the Bills, so I want to see them do well. And I think maybe, maybe Allen could do it. If not, you have a great um, bridge quarterback in A.J. McCarron who can yeah. keep things yeah. afloat. You know, I think Mayfield, Donald, or Darnold, Allen, and Jackson all have – you know, decent situations they can go into. Some can sit if they need that kind of experience to get. Um, and then, for example, like Allen, he can get starter. Darnold can come in and be the starter. But I think Josh Rosen's coming into the, in my opinion, the worst case scenario. I mean, you look at the Cardinals roster, and there's a lot of age in that. So guys, he's going to he might get the locker room uh, experience that he might be lacking right now. But the the playing and like you don't know who's going to be there in the next year. So other like, than other than David Johnson, the running back. Yeah, I I can't think of really anybody. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald is not long for this for this league and for Josh Rosen. They might play together a little bit, but Larry Fitzgerald is definitely on the back nine mm-hmm. of his career. I mean, which is sad to say because I love watching him play, but it's just the truth. I can't think of any real youthful guys. Justin Brown left in free agency. I can't think of really any other of their receivers' tight ends. Jackson or uh, 
David Johnson comes back. I mean, he's coming off a season-ending injury last year. Yeah, that's true. Uh, real quickly, just to, just to wrap it up, but I think Mayfield, uh, because of who the, the Browns traded for in Tyrod Taylor, isn't a bad pick, but I think it's very risky. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's, and I've felt that way with, um, and at least a lot of the sentiment that I've heard today with the Cleveland Browns has been that that it's very, it's very boomer busty their whole draft, not just not just this, but their whole draft entirely. I mean, they they said these are guys that can play football, and I mean that's great, but you have to remember that all these discussions you have to take with a grain of salt because the game is played on a field, yep. not on paper, and not in dis- discussions. So at the end of the day. You have to wait till the rubber to meet the road. Uh, Sam Darnold, I, I just don't know with the Jets. They've had so many quarterbacks, so much instability. There's there are rumors prior to or in the off season that this might be the last year for Todd Bowles. He might be on the hot seat, which I think is unfair. And just New York, there's going to be a lot of pressure for him to play right away. Um, I think that he's fortunate to have a guy like Josh McCown, but I don't know if that's going to help him enough as a guy. I think that should have stayed in school. Uh, Allen, we talked. I talked about enough. He could definitely play right away if he plays his cards right. Rosen and is a tough situation, and I already gave my commentary on Lamar Jackson as well. Um, I think that he's in the best situation by far. Um, if I was him, I would feel great about this. You can learn from Joe Flacco. You have guys that have worked with mobile quarterbacks before that are working within that organization, either as coordinators or as people on the offensive side of the football, and so. You also have Robert Griffin. So if you really want to learn, you know, people always, that guy can teach you how to do it. That guy can teach you how to not do it because yeah. he ultimately, you know, relied too much on his wheels and too much on being his mobility, and he ended up really taking a beating for it, and he's never been the same quarterback since then. A guy I think that has a lot of talent as well, but maybe just didn't use it in the right way. I think that that's, you know, and then you have Joe Flacco, who, despite my constant criticism of him, has won a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, so the guy knows something about playing quarterback in the league. We'll move on and go specifically to the Cleveland Browns. Now, I think I'm the only non, non-Cleveland non Browns fan in this room, but I try to take my, my Pittsburgh Steelers fan cap off when we have these discussions because I try to be fair. You know, we're Alliance's favorite sports talk show. Why, why would I, you know, no, this isn't fake news. Anyway, <laughs> the Browns go Mayfield and Ward, and De- Baker Mayfield at number one, Denzel Ward at number four. Guys, the the discussion in both national and local media today is just sour. That's why I put the question that way. Why are so many people so sour on these picks? It's not even like, oh, I just don't think they're great. I mean, people are legitimately like, it, it bothers them. You hear it in their voice. You see it on the expression on their face. What are your thoughts on these picks? Do you do you know, do you know fall into that category of the people that, no, I just don't like it? Are you willing to hear it out? Give me your thoughts, Brendan. Uh, well, I am not in that category. I am not sour about either of these oh, picks. Um, you know, you look at Browns fans in the past, like with the Manziel draft, you know, everyone was like, take Manziel, take Manziel, and so the Browns did. Last year with Miles Garrett, everyone wanted Garrett, so the Browns did. I think what John Dorsey did here is say, you know what, I'm doing it my way. I'm going to be a little unconventional here and take the players who I feel are going to be the best for our system, and that's Mayfield and Ward. I don't get why everyone's so gung-ho about Ward, that pick, Browns fans in the past have always wondered why do the Browns never draft an Ohio State guy. Mm-hmm. Well, here's your guy, and it's a really good pick too. Hometown guy, um, and he's probably one. Of, he was probably the defense, best defensive back in the entire draft. So I don't get why you know no one's excited about that pick. I'm gonna guess it's because we didn't take Bradley Chubb. But. A lot of a lot of it, it stems from Mayfield, I think. A lot of people are, are indifferent about Ward because he's an Ohio State guy and he's a local guy. Depending on what yeah. what what outlets you're listening to, people highlight those types of things. Ohio State with with right now a pretty decent um, per, uh, trajectory for defensive mm-hmm. backs in the NFL. I've had a lot of successful guys get picked up and do really well. And then you, he's from a suburb of Cleveland, so a lot of the local stations really like that. You know, was a prime time high school football player here too. But yeah, I but I I, I think you're right. 
that that one is it's a tough one to be super critical of but i right. d- don't worry i, I can get, find I a way i get the criticism <laughs> <laughs> i get the criticism of mayfield he he's going to be under you know the spotlight 24/7 um people are going to be following him around on the weekends friday and saturday nights seeing if he's going to do the same things manzel did and the same things he mayfield did in college as well um cuz he was you know out on the weekends getting chased by police so that's going to be, you know, something to really watch for. And I get why Browns fans are, you know, they don't want the same thing, the same story about that that happened with Manziel. I get that. But he, this guy's different. Um, I really don't think that that's going to be the case here. You know, I'm, I'm going to skip over Barry for a second. Uh, and kind of just touch on Barry's Barry's organizing himself right just now. Just kind of yeah. touch on a couple things. But I don't really think it's – the whole Denzel Ward pick. I think at this point, Browns fans were hopeful, hey, we have a chance to get Saquon Barkley. Arguably the best player on the board, and I think Barry's going to kind of touch on that in a little bit. But to pick Ward, it's a good pick in the sense like, hey, it's a local guy, it's a position we needed, arguably the better position player in that position in this draft. To pass on the second best guy as well, three picks later, in uh, Bradley Chubb, that's kind of why everybody's sour. You potentially two guys that, if they're drafted in different years, could be the number one overall pick. So it's I don't think the I don't think the Browns wanted to go with a defensive lineman though, because the the defensive line wasn't really a problem last year. It was just the, it was the secondary. The, they as, needed to really, you know, fix that secondary, and that's what they did with Oh, I, I agree that's with fair. that. But, I mean, you look at the Jacksonville Jaguars, they definitely don't need another defensive lineman, and that's what they drafted. No. Yeah. So, I mean, Yeah, but they made the playoffs. Yeah, so. that's true, but, but a pass rush oftentimes fixes you know, a poor secondary because true. if you can, you don't have yeah. time to throw the ball, you don't you don't have to mm-hmm. cover them for very long if, if you're getting chased down by these two mammoth guys in Bradley Chubb and Miles Garrett. But at the same time, if you have better defensive backs, then you give your pass rush more time because you have good coverage. So, I mean, either way, it makes sense. But I I get what your point is. A lot of fans really wanted Bradley Chubb, and so ultimately, for almost no matter who it was, was a disappointment. It was going to be a disappointment. Here's my thing, and you know me as a passionate, for no reason, Browns fan. I sat there and I watched 16 games go down the gutter and – me, we worked Same out here, the we, were, we worked Same out here. we worked out the stats from last week. We figured out that the Browns have won three percent of their games in the last two years. That means they have going into any game ninety seven percent chance to lose. And I woke up Sundays to to watch this happen. Now, this is why people are so sad about it. Okay, you want Mayfield? Okay, you know what? I'm I'm willing to buy into it. Like I've bought into everything the Browns have done. For no good reason, apparently. But he's there at four, if you want him so bad. You pass on Saquon Barkley, and then you talked about talk. You touched on that, Unc. I get you. You pass on him, and he's the best player in the draft. I don't think there's any argue about it. He's what six foot, two hundred thirty pounds, running a four four zero, which to me rain means you're in a four three nine. You're four three. You're you're a playmaker kind of guy, and we pass on you. Okay, and then. You pass on the second best player in the draft in, in Bradley Chubb. Here's the thing. I know you were saying we don't need a de- uh, an all defensive lineman. I like Emmanuel Ogba. I think he did some good things. But let me tell you this. If you get Miles Garrett on one side, you get Emmanuel uh, and Bradley Chubb on another side, you have just set yourself up for the, a strong platform to arguably have the best pass rush core in the league for years to come. That's what you do. And, and Agba, hey man, you you can play around, you can shift, you can move. So if 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 Garrett needs a breather, go ahead and step in. Like Carl Nassim, if if um, Belly Chubb needs a breather, go ahead and step in. We we have faith in you. That's why people are so sour about him. And then the other thing is this: Did you notice that the draft that we're talking about, quarterbacks, Darnold, Mayfield, Allen, Rosen, all of these picks are based off what I call the Browns' mistakes. You take Mayfield at one, and I tell you, I'm not, I'm, I'm not hearing it. I really think 
that the Giants were going to take Sam Darnold. That's what they said. I know they were trying to blow smoke a little bit, but you don't really know how much Eli Manning has left in the tank. So you're you're looking to take a quarterback that can at least learn and take and take things into in the future. But they go Mayfield and all of a sudden Saquon Barkley's on the on the board. We're not gonna make the same mistake you did. We take Saquon Barkley. And here come the Jets licking their chops saying, Wish there's Sam Donald right there waiting for us. We didn't know what we were gonna do. We we're gonna take Josh Allen or or Rosen and they take Sam Donald. And then you go you go ahead and you take um Denzel Ward. Then the Broncos are sitting there like, well, I mean, we didn't know what we were going to do, but might as well get Bradley Chubb appear up with uh, Von Miller, see if we can get us another I Super think that's Bowl. the interesting thing because yeah. they were all about trading down. They didn't know who they were going to get. They didn't know what they were going to do. Bradley Chubb walks in their lap and it's like, hey, hey might as well. <laughs> but, you yep. know, going on that, I think the most like intriguing thing, why people are really sour about this, you have the first and third pick in the second round. And there was, do not win there was your top – Top 50 players in this draft were all in pretty impactful players. I mean, you saw guys like Josh Jackson from Iowa who mm-hmm. had 10 interceptions this year in the Big Ten, which is nothing to yeah. uh, pass over. Yeah, and, like, he's a guy that went late second round. So these are players that you could potentially pick up. And, you know, yeah, they picked up um, the offensive tackle from Nevada um, and um, Nick Chubb, but – you know, Barry and I talked about this. It's kind of like, hey, we're gonna appease you. We're gonna pick. We're gonna pick up a good running back in the second round. Just kind of, we we need to get Parkley, but hey, we'll pick up Nick Chubb. Now, now the thing about Nick Chubb is, that you guys know me. I blew my knee out. It ain't fun. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you right now, as much as I love you guys and I love to play with you, that you couldn't get me back on the field because I don't think I could do it. So we'll see exactly how Nick Chubb works out. Now, yeah, resp- back- responded well. I mean, yeah, while I mean, in Georgia, yeah. responded well. Uh, Mm -hmm. two of those things had a solid year i mean the the nfl is much like how georgia handled Mm -hmm. things last year with a running back by committee and so i think that you i mean you've seen guys do it before i mean and you're not wrong but i it's definitely something to watch because that could end up being a really bad pick just because guys worn down physically now i'll say one last thing i'll say one last thing and you're not gonna like a goal and so apologize (laughs) <laughs> you, I know you don't like the Browns reference to Mayfield and uh, Manziel, but I'll take it a step further. I want to remind you a couple years ago, I loved Johnny Manziel. I loved him. <laughs> People forget he completed 70% of his passes in college. People oh, forget that he was not accurate. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can show you the stats that he is. But who went before him? Do you remember the guy's name? Do you the, the, who the Browns drafted? Who the Browns? Who did the Browns draft? We had two picks. Justin Gilbert, defensive back, Oklahoma State. That was one State. of the worst drafts. Ever. How's he yeah. doing? Uh, uh, yeah. I think me and Justin Gilbert had the same amount of NFL snaps this year. <laughs> so, <laughs> if I recall correctly. And then we take Manziel. And now you got me sitting here looking at Mayfield and Ward. Listen, I, I like the hometown, this kind of thing. I grew up in front of Euclid High School. I, I, I could get two shakes of a lamb's tail about this. I, I, I just... I was about to say. He's a good player. Making me nervous in here. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> thought we were going to have to cut it. <laughs> he, he, he's a good player and all, and I understand that we really needed some help in the secondary, but I'm sitting here looking, and and me as a Browns fan, I'm hoping and praying that I'm not looking at another Manziel Gilbert situation. That's the last thing I'll say. You know, it's like... Um, well, I'm just thinking, like... Look at the who the Browns picked up in free agency. Okay, and you've got you, you, really know, you got Carlos players, Hyde. And yeah. You got, yeah, made some solid trades. Mm. Yeah, I I think this is by far the use best, that money. The most I mean, successful that's... Browns free agency we've had in years. Yeah, but you you get a guy from San Francisco, a local guy of Ohio State, Carlos Hyde, who had a pretty decent the year last year, but you're paying him sixteen million dollars. So, it for. A seat for the yeah, first I mean, season. but and when like, you're a team that were walking into those trades in free agency had over, I think eighty. Oh 80 no, eighty to I, spend. What, no, I'm sixteen saying doesn't like really the, mean uh, much right. to you. You had the youngest team in the NFL last year, so these guys aren't making big bucks. Yeah, and you know, if if you're a team in playoff contention, I think that your de- your point is definitely well warranted. But no. when you're the Cleveland Browns <laughs> at this point, and you have eighty I mean, million dollars to spend. I mean, I think they, they made all years past. So I yeah. guess why well, kind of start now? You're going to pick a. They picked a running back, yeah, second round, but number one overall pick. 
no first pick in the or third pick in the second round. There's quite a significant like price gap. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's and fair. You're gonna pay a guy sixty million dollars to on your bench? Probably not. That's the re. That's my only reasoning why they didn't pick Barkley number one. Yeah, I. The, it's a business. The, in the, long the term. thing with with this is that I really think that Denzel Ward is drafted far, far too early. Yeah. And I'll definitely listen to and respect. Well, we made the board. That's the guy we had on the board. We respect the board. It's always about the board with the, with, the, with teams and, and who they have rated. And so I understand that. And ultimately, you do want your guys. That's important. You know, the Browns are looking to establish a culture, and I think that when you find people that you think can do that, it's very important. And so maybe that's what it is, but right now, like I said before, the games are played on the field. So the, you will see how these things work out in the months to come. But yeah. me, my reaction standing here, or sitting here, excuse me, live on YouTube, <laughs> is that is that that's a bad pick. Because I think Denzel Ward does have elite speed, but I think Denzel Ward is more Bradley Roby than yeah. a former Ohio State defensive mm-hmm. back than he is Marshawn Lattimore. How's Bradley Let, Roby? Let, Bradley Roby is a solid, solid contributor to that Broncos defense, but he gets beat because he doesn't have height. Mm-hmm. But he, he's a solid corner. And that's fine. And there's definitely a role for a guy like that. I'm not mm-hmm. like trashing Bradley Roby as a player, but. The number four overall pick, you would like to be a little bit better than solid. That that that's uh, you know, my only I'll, point. I'll say this: I think you're going to be surprised, and you're that's what a lot be, of people you're are saying. Be wrong, but I'll just say this: I tweeted it out after the draft. If you're a Browns fan, don't pay a hundred any attention to training camp or the preseason, because what we see in the past those don't mean. Anything. Four and 16. <laughs> so, you know, wait till September 9th and then you can start so judging so September 9th. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and, and I made that point too, but yeah. just from the initial reaction today, I mean, you look at today's dynamic of NFL wide receivers and he's he's going to have a tough time. He's he just is. And maybe he matures faster. You know, he only had one year under his belt as a starter at Ohio State. And arguably and this is what everyone said in the fall, too. This is one of Ohio State's worst defenses in the past couple of years. And so, and you're, you know, in the past, they were the, be- the best part of that team was the defense, and they had all types of guys going around the field making crazy plays. Mm-hmm. And, you know, somebody tweeted out a, a big hit of his against Maryland, and I tweeted at them that it's too bad that the Browns didn't schedule Maryland this year. I mean, I don't, I don't know what that was supposed to prove. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that highlight reel, but... I don't think that that's – I mean, like I said, all this is decided on the field. And I very well – I'll wear the egg on my face if I'm wrong. But, you know, you know – You may have talked about this before, and you have the one in four picks. So with one of those picks, you can be riskier. And, like, some people are considering Ward risky. But, Chris, did you not just say he would be could be a solid player? Yeah, but I'm saying at number four, I mean, you're yeah, looking you want, at you're looking at a guy that you can want a guy that's day one change your franchise yes, exactly. But at the same time, it, it, the Browns story because if I told you that drafting, Baker Mayfield so. would be a solid NFL quarterback, hey, you, you know, wouldn't like that. At number 16, one, solid sounds pretty good. I guess that's everyone, true. Everyone you know in the past <laughs> has been excited about the Browns picks. You know, oh hey, we got Manziel, yay! Mm-hmm. And then you know we were proven wrong. Let's so. Let's go. So we're so, all <laughs> mad this year, and then we'll be surprised. About it. Can I say something, Brendan? And you're you're gonna get a little upset with me about this, but I saw that tweet from far, far too many people. That is the lamest thing I've ever heard in my I'm life. Well, everybody loves the picks, and they stink. So everybody hates them. They're gonna be good now. <laughs> you guys, it's That's like the uh, life of a Browns fan, right there for you. <laughs> NFL drafts are super. You know, like this. It's, it's you right. ever see you know like the game two for flinching? That's what like it is. Like the Browns make the picks, and you just automatically flinch, <laughs> and that's what that sounds like. I think like, Browns fans. Think of here's team does here's this? an initiative we need to start. Just give them a hug. You see someone wearing a Browns hat or shirt, just give them a hug because they need a little bit of love. They're they're flinching too but, much. Hug it out. <laughs> um, um, if another but, team does this, do they get as much flack as the Browns are? I think that you've earned you've Browns. earned that you've earned that reputation. Let, let me say this. Let me say this one last thing. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Nick Wright, who you know me, I personally love, said there is one reason why the Cleveland Cavaliers are not the Cleveland, Cav- uh, the Cleveland Browns. Because Talking the, gr- the, greatest, the greatest 
player ever to play the sport of basketball happened to be born in the vicinity of Cleveland. So what I'm saying to you is this. Cavs didn't pass on him. And and if it's me, I'm looking at, well, I got the two best players in the draft. I got two picks. I mean, I know we I'm hoping at least we get one, but I'd like to get both. And you get neither. So I feel like I, I, got, a little, I got a little ground to be upset here. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, like I said, the rubber will meet the road. And yeah. when they actually start playing real football with shoulder pads, helmets, in front of in front of you know ravenous fans. That's the that's the time we really start evaluating. I mean, it was We're just pre-season. trying not to be in the top ten in the draft. So, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, like, be like thirty or something. Absolutely. So we'll, we won't take any breaks because we we really got into that topic. And that's okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the NBA playoffs. So I I got to play one of my favorite cuts. I'm the only one who has headphones on in the studio. That's disappointing. But wait. A little Kurt, basketball, Curtis Blow. Mm-hmm. Rock me basketball, number one. Gotta love it. Anyway, NBA, an interesting playoff, NBA playoff. So, guys, real quick, do you think that round two can live up to round one? I think east-west, pretty entertaining playoffs. We thought they'd be rather cookie-cutter. You know, uh, people always describe it with the NCAA brackets. When you go with the expected team to win, is calling a chalk, you know, or the higher seeds. And you saw a little bit of that, but we also saw some surprises too. So can round two live up to the the expectations set by round one, Brendan? Uh, it definitely will. I think for the East, not so much for the West. I think Houston's going to roll through Utah. Same with Golden State and New Orleans. No, those two series might not be sweeps, but uh, I think those are you know pretty much the finals for the West are pretty much set in stone. The East is going to be really interesting. Toronto and Cleveland. I agree. Um, that could really go six or seven again for both teams. Um, and then you got Philadelphia and Boston. Boston, you know, a lot of people were saying we're going to lose to Milwaukee. It was close, but they didn't. And then, you know, Sixers, everyone's writing them in in the finals. Uh, that could really be an interesting series. I think Philadelphia wins, though. Um, but the most intriguing series out of all four of those is definitely Toronto and Cleveland. I agree with and, you. That's why I just let you roll. The, the, you were going. <laughs> you had it. You had it. In all, in my I'm opinion, gonna, all, all right. I'm gonna call Cleveland in seven. So call Cleveland in seven. Okay. I mean, I am the one who sat here last week and said if the Cavs did advance, I didn't have a lot of confidence in them. So I'll get to my thoughts and feelings on it. But I think that you hit the nail right on the head with that. With all with all the series. I'm gonna start a bold. <laughs> Cavs sweep it, Toronto. Okay. <laughs> you want to know why? Because DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry do would. not know how to act when LeBron James steps on the court. They don't. It's really true. true. They, they fumble. That's what they call them the baby dinosaurs is the great Uncle Shannon Sharp likes to call them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I'm I, I'm flirting with myself a little bit here by saying it's sweet, but I, I don't think it's close. I think if you give LeBron a little bit of rest, which that may affect it, but I, I think it's over and done with. Um, coming back up to can, can, they, can they live up to round one? Beginning, I was going to say, yeah, but we had two game sevens, and we had to watch Giannis. That's tough. Uh, yeah. However you say his last name. Ata de Kumbo. Yeah, Ata de Kumbo. Kumbo. Uh, fumble his way through his first game seven. Which the Greek I was freak. Actually, the Greek freak. <laughs> fumble his way through his first game seven, and I was really upset about that, but yeah, I wanted to see Milwaukee beat Boston because I felt like you know Boston's not even a whole team right now anyway with Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward sitting out, so they, they all can just get to rest, but... You had a game seven and those buzzer beaters back to back and like whether well, it was a game two that led to Boston winning it out, but there there's that. So I got I got the seventy sixers beating Boston four two. I got the Cavs beating them the Toronto four oh four one. And Cavs Sixers finals. We'll talk about that later. That'll um, be oh man. I think you're right. The West is already kind of set in stone here, but I'm going to say, I'm, I'm looking forward to Anthony Davis playing Kevin Durant. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, it was they, already, good. they already dropped one, but I mean, 123-101 for, not, it's not bad. That I think was that, pretty close for the you know, yeah, first for a good half. Yeah. I was about to say, then, I think Golden State pulled away with it. I didn't, didn't watch the full thing, but yeah. I think Golden State sort of just pulled away with it at the end. Just, and we know how they are you know, offensively. They get they, on a little yeah. bit of a roll. The Pelicans just don't have the guys. 
they just don't. But no. they do got Anthony Davis, and when they were going at it, they they didn't they didn't know how to react to one another. They were switching screens. That's why Anthony Davis ends up getting guarded by Andre Iguodala, who I'm sorry, love him, no. And yeah. then Kevin Durant a good gets, defensive player, but not in that end matchup. Up guarded by Drew Holiday or who, whoever, and it's just it's not working out. So there's that. Uh, and the Rockets are going to sweep the Jazz. Yeah. And I like Donovan Mitchell, but he, they're getting swept. So there's that. Uh, you know, bold prediction here. Um, yes. Pelicans are winning games two and three for one reason and one reason wow. only. Steph Curry's coming back for game two. Mm. Warriors kind of found a rhythm last couple of games with who they're playing, they're subbing and everything. You're going to throw Steph Curry back in that mix. Yeah, he was with the team, like, for the majority of the year, but he's coming off another injury, something he's dealt with before. And games recently coming off injury. He's been gone he's not, for at least a month. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. like yeah. You look back in the regular season, and game, his oh, first yeah, couple no, games back too. from uh, injury, he's not the same player. He's not putting up threes the for other, him. The other thing is, is that much in the way that you gel as a lineup, they've been gelling without him. Like, I'm yeah. not saying that the Warriors don't need Steph Curry. Now, I'm not saying that, but... It's going to be different for yeah. everybody to, to get used Their to him being back. Their production definitely goes down. And, like, I think that's the, you know, and then if you give the Pelicans two wins, who's saying they can't get two more eventually? Like, and, and it, could got, go, it could go all seven. Do I think it happens? I think it's a 4-2 loss. But yeah. it, it, there is a chance that it could go all seven. Now, Rockets and Jazz, I, it's, the Jazz <laughs> are getting swept. I think we're all kind of all, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. all in agreement <laughs> of that. Oh, Sorry, Utah. That. <laughs> but back to your idea about Steph Curry. There was another stat, and I'm a stats guy, but when Kirk, Steph Curry is on the floor, they play with like the first, fat, like the top fastest pace in the league, and when he's yeah. not, they're like 23rd or something like that. That's interesting. And, and so who says, yeah, and who says Curry comes back and lights it up? Like right, the greatest that's comeback true. Of all time, he doesn't have a rhythm he, either. You got to get his rhythm, you know what but, I mean? but, but there's going to be that shift change because the guys are going to come back and like, oh, we're playing faster now, but we're not. <laughs> Kevin Durant's like, I've been the guy, you haven't. What's going on? And, and I, I will be, I'll, I'll touch with you on that. I, I like Pelicans winning game two and three and four two loss, like you said. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I, I would love, I would love it because I, lo- I miss big men in the NBA, yeah. and so Anthony Davis. Reminds me of of a time that once was <laughs> when there was true centers and mm-hmm. not these stretch centers yeah. that all, yeah. that shoot three pointers and stuff. The crazy like thing, that. he could be a stretch center though. Like, he really could. He can shoot. Yeah, he, he yeah. could be, but he does. He it, he you plays know, it, more it, like a true center. Yeah, yeah I was about I, to I say agree. he he especially without Boogie. Mm. He he's he's, in, he's, he's a low yeah, post yeah, presence well, because well. yeah he's got to get those rebounds for this team, yeah, but. but. I mean, if Boogie's there, it's completely different. Oh, story, we got yeah. a different series going on. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think the East. Yeah, uh, I agree. A couple more technicals. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh wow, Boogie and Draymond Green. Oh, oh wow, Kevin Durant that did more develop chippy. a little temper too this, this season, so we'll see. <laughs> oh my, um, yeah, the masked warrior over there, but mm-hmm. um, no, in the East, I I do like the matchups more. Like, you have a Boston team who coming in the playoffs, everybody's like. They're not gonna win. Like they lost your two best players, and like who, who do you have? But <laughs> Terry Rose now going you have yeah. Terry Rosen going off. Yeah. And who's saying like? Do I see them being the Seven Sixers? No. But do I see close games? Yes. I think that the the combination of inexperience by the Seventy Sixers and just the the evil wizard that is Brad Stevens, the head coach of the Boston Celtics, <laughs> can just make things interesting. I think the 76ers win it mm-hmm. because they're just more talented. I mean, they have the horses that that the other that, that clearly Boston doesn't because of injuries. But I think that Brad Stevens at least makes it interesting. I think they want it more too. Like they're young, gritty guys. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, you yep. see Embiid today, like uh, gets called out by Hassan Whiteside, or Hassan Whiteside said like. He wasn't in the greatest like physical shape for these like coming off injury or something. Fat. And yeah, he basically said you know Which isn't still cool. Lost. No. cool. Which isn't cool as a as yeah. a bigger guy. But, That's uh, not nice. You know, Barry No name calling. I would love to see the Cavs sweep before. You know how much confidence the Cavs would have walking into the seventy sixers then? And and the thing is this, since the trade, we've beaten them twice. And, and they don't know how to act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't one like a 25 or What was a blowout? Point? Yeah, 30 And then the blowout. other one was the, what, 19-point comeback or something like that? Something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. But you don't know how to act when LeBron just gets on the floor. So I'm not buying into the Kyle Plus, Lowry, DeMar I think, I think, the, I think from yesterday, you know, 
the supporting cast is like really starting to pick up too. You got to put Thompson in there. I think most of the game he's an impact player, and then when Hill actually leads the point, they're a different team. I think. Right. Yeah. That that was my biggest contention with the Cavs. Was 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 the supporting cast around LeBron, and that you're looking at guys that just weren't producing, and they're not, and when they were, it's not consistently. They need to find some consistency in this series, and then I'd feel a lot differently about them as a playoff team. But you had a team. You can't just because LeBron James can drop forty five a night does not mean that he should in order for you to win every yeah. every it doesn't single mean game. that they're going to win that right. Either, so. You're clearly not to win yeah. by two. Yeah. yeah. Can I say one thing? Mm-hmm. When you talk about contributors and supporting cast, I really miss a guy by the name of Matthew Delavadova. Yeah. I yep. really miss Eff- Delhi. Effort and hustle all the time. You know, I would love to have him, like Fry back, uh, Richard Jefferson. Guys that, that you know, are going to play. <laughs> the Effort way in. the way that they were playing in 2016, <laughs> yeah. I want them all back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want. Uh, Richard Jefferson. Uh, the, as much uh, as I love him, uh, he, can still play. Six, yeah. uh, he looked he looked Delhi rough a little bit last postseason for a finger roll from yeah. like half yeah. court. Yeah. He looked a little bit rough. 2016 Richard Jefferson though, that guy, I, I there was I wasn't worried at all. I was happy when he was Dunk on the court. We, Green, we need like know, a exactly. 2015 like uh, uh, Mike Miller. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Bring oh, Shane no. Battier back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, like you, you have a guy LeBron who can put up 45. I think it was what nine and seven or seven and nine, one of the two. But he didn't have a single player on his team score more than 20. Score 20 points or more. In any of the games, that's wild. You have one guy that does that, and those two three point wins. LeBron doesn't have to score as much, or who's saying, "Hey, he might put up forty points every night." I have a guy putting up twenty. That's a little bit I better think, than. I think that changes to go though this series. I think you know Love will at least put up twenty plus. I think or Clarkson or a guy like that can sh- that can shoot threes. I think they can definitely Jordan play Clarkson. well against Toronto. The poor so. man's Westbrook. <laughs> <laughs> Let's no, let's I think hope. that's Oladipo now. Yeah. I mean, you saw did you guys see uh his uh he sent an Instagram DM to his trainer twenty minutes after the game saying, I'm ready to work, like let's get to it. Goodness. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, have I guess have fun with that. But <laughs> with that being said, everybody's favorite segment, the final countdown. So we're gonna get into Barry. Yeah, I know you've listened to the show before. But mm-hmm. just to give you a refresher, final countdown, we take a little bit different angle on things. We have a little bit more fun with some of the goofy, goofier stories in sports. So we get out of this, you know, sometimes heated banter, but never, <laughs> never hated, never hatred, but a little heated. And we'll we'll start with, you know, I'm just going to come out and say it. We talked about the NFL draft for the majority of the show tonight, but a lot of velvet suits. A lot, a lot of velvet suits. Now, a roommate of mine was in a wedding, and months ago we went with him to get his tux fitted because none of us had anything better to do. <laughs> and, you know, I'm always along for the ride. And I was in whatever whatever company he's getting fitted at, and I was feeling a, leather, uh, a velvet jacket, and I laughed. I was like, man, I don't know who would wear something like this. Like, But then here the NFL draft, every other guy getting interviewed has a velvet suit, so... What are your thoughts on velvet suits? Would you wear a velvet suit, Brandon? Uh, yeah, I definitely would. <laughs> yes, for the occasion. Yes, yes. Even that's what I like to hear. I like that. If confidence. I'm in a wedding and like yeah. you know the some sort all of the formal occasion, rock it, yeah. yeah, some sort of formal occasion. I don't want to put you in the shoes of being drafted <laughs> in the NFL, oh, but no. if that's where you want to be. Barry, you're not no. Just no. Oh, no. Okay. I like red velvet cake, not red velvet suits. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm that not, I'm not be, buying that. That might be one of the better. I'm not going with that. No. Might be one of the better ones all time. I like red velvet cake, <laughs> not, red, not red velvet suits, not velvet suits. Unk. No, I don't. I don't like either one. But if I'm paying uh, like a stylist to do that for me, like or my agent is, uh, whatever they're going to tell me to wear, more than likely, if I don't completely hate it, it's going to happen. <laughs> Like this is your be. choice. Yeah, gotta, this is this is in your hands. This decision. You know, I, I'm chance. a fan of the all it's white, so, you know, <laughs> oh, the yeah. suit or all gr- gray or like silver. Like LeBron rock for his draft. Yeah, game. like 100 percent wear that all the time. <laughs> yes, I'm I'm all in it. I'm I get it. I'm a big guy. 
you know, for, former offensive lineman. That's probably a lot of velvet material, but I'm I'm doing it. You know, where I'm was the camo? It. There you go. Like, I'm doing it. I agree with Brendan. Camo you know what? suit? Would you wear a camo uh, a suit? Camo? No. Right now. <laughs> I'm wearing Vel- velvet before oh. I wear camo. <laughs> velvet, velvet, go big and go velvet bold, man. Camo, I like to bro. I like to be the center of attention sometimes. And if I wore a velvet jacket, there's definitely that. people talking to you. So I really hope there's a lot of people walking around the campus center here in this conversation <laughs> about velvet Watch suits. Watch tomorrow, everyone will wear velvet suits. <laughs> Thought that was the sports show. <laughs> They're talking about velvet suits. Fashion, though. So I yeah. we're in a velvet robe. Yeah, you know what? Fashion we're zone. we're dynamic yeah. in this room. Yeah. Okay, we can do a lot more than just sports. <laughs> Those of you who are judging us silently, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but my dad just texted me. Um, Vito Via best draft day outfit. I have no idea what he wore, but oh, he, he oh, was he yeah. wore the Hawaiian. Thing? Yeah, oh, he yes, was in the, the full yes, okay. the full yeah. garb. With yes, that yeah, okay. was. That was yeah, pretty I, solid. I do like that. Thanks for the shout out, Dad. Yeah, he's in, he's the guy with the long name, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vito, Vito, yeah, the, it's ten, fifty-eight ten characters technically. long. They yeah. said, yeah, yeah. It's essentially, that on the back I, of a jersey. Yeah. So anyway, we'll move on to another t- NFL draft topic because why not? That's been the, the theme of the show. Okay, it was re- it was reported that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were going to go live from the pirate ship in their stadium. Easily one of the coolest things in the NFL in addition to some of the pools and stuff that are out there. But they're going to go live to the pirate ship and have a parrot come in to read the name of a NFL, of their next NFL draft pick. They just went live from the pirate ship. This never happened. There was a parrot there, but he wasn't reading off any picks. So, how upset are you that the Buccaneers lied and deceived each and every one of us? Should the league penalize them for this? I think they should. I'm going to answer this first. I'm obviously I'm all about draft day gimmicks. I think some of this stuff is really funny, especially in the later rounds. You know, they they almost make the picks insignificant on TV, and so sometimes they don't even read the guys' names and things like that, and it's disappointing to me. So if something like that, if you have a little gimmick to it, you know, where the Browns had picks read from the Pro Football Hall of Fame, they had different kids. Bernie Kosar was there. That's fun. A parrot, obviously, much, much, much another step up from something like that. But it's just memorable. And for a guy maybe in the fifth or sixth round, you know, who knows what your NFL career ends up to be like? And maybe that's the most notable thing that there ever is about you. But that's really cool. So I'm really disappointed. I hope they get fined. I hope they get a pick taken away from them. <laughs> oh, definitely fine. Oh yeah. Tampa Bay is a bucket of lies. You guys told me that what's his name, James Winston, was going to be the next Donovan McNabb. And now you're telling me about a parrot. <laughs> Thanks for nothing. They're not delivering on either yeah, one of those. Deliver at all. It's not that hard to not get, you know, a parrot record. Even if you yeah. couldn't get the actual parrot to say it, find a yeah. parrot recorder. Yeah, at least say and NFL y'all... draft or something. Yeah. It's, get the parrot on. saying something. Mm. If you would have said something, I, I would have been it. okay with it. <laughs> I'd have let it go. But, but you just failed. And then they just rub it right in your nose to it just happened. put it in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> they put the parrot on old, the shoulder just to let you know, oh, we got the it. parrot all right. <laughs> you know, Not, it, it made me, yeah, it, nobody wants to see a liar. <laughs> right. But I think the best one, though, the, I think it was the 49ers had C three PO R two D two and Chewbacca come out and announce a couple picks and you know yeah. I was a big fan of that phenomenal and I was I've never really like, actually watched the whole draft until this weekend mm-hmm. um I I saw the mystery relevant pick yes how oh, funny is that oh I you love have it. some <laughs> old white lady <laughs> saying it and she was like congratulations mystery relevant that's uh, just there's so a ironic. you know there's a parade. There's a parade. There's a for parade him. for Mister Irrelevant. Really? You get your own jersey that says the last, you know, last pick, whatever. The, it says Mister Irrelevant, and it's a four X jersey, yeah. which I find yeah. hilarious. Yeah, and it was going to a uh, five eight hundred and eighty five pound uh, wide receiver. Wide receiver. He yeah. also threw a no hitter in the world of the series from SMU. Is a that's where he went to school. I wish you know that. So I, and I, he I got also that. threw a no hitter in the Little League World Series too. Dual threat. They, Next Tim Tebow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what the what the you conversion rates are and... and what Mr. Irrelevant's actually do in the NFL, but I love it. I think it's one of the funniest things. I would love to be Mr. Irrelevant, but unfortunately, I went undrafted this weekend. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we'll try to close things out um, with these two stories, so we'll go quick. First off, really funny video. We're going to tweet it out, so make sure you follow us at WRMU underscore sports. There is a little league baseball player and I, is he doing a home run trot or is he I'll, I'll I, give I, a paint so wait wait pay, remember this is radio 
So you got to paint the picture here. So I want everything. So give us the yeah. scene because this is more your story than mine. So I'm going to let you have this moment. Chris is my roommate. You know there's nothing better that I can do is give details. Can't close the story, but yeah, I can give the details. Yeah, but, so right, basically, right. the video shows a kid who's coming from third base, coming home. The coach says, run as fast as you can to home plate. The kid goes slow motion like he's running like Baywatch almost. <laughs> Excellent technique, though. Getting that, yeah, thumb, no, oh, yeah, that yeah. thumb to the nose. Oh, 90 <laughs> degrees. His elbows are locked, you know, rotating at the shoulders. <laughs> you know, excellent form. I want that kid drafted in the future years. But then about halfway down, you hear the coach says, come on, you got you to gotta speed it up. The kid has none of it. Pushes the coach away and finishes his trot home. Crowd's loving every second of it. But, yeah, it's by far one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, the the video is great. Absolutely, just just one of those things we recommend that you watch. Trey Quinn, wide receiver from some Southern Methodist University, was the Mister was Mister Irrelevant this Congratulations. year. Congratulations! So, just just to give him a Not shout out now to us, we're gonna end it on this one. So Dallas Goddard, a newly drafted tight end by the Philadelphia Eagles, um, he his name has inspired fans, various ones, to start GoFundMe pages in order to get him to change his first name from Dallas. To Philly. <laughs> they want him to be Philly Goddard, not Dallas Goddard. Now, the campaign isn't getting off the ground much, but would you, would you in a situation like this, change your own name? Trust the process. That'd so is that name. a yes? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, go for it, Phil. Whatever you want to do. Uh, would you change your name in, in order I think, to... I think you make it a nickname for sure, like Dallas... Quotation Dallas mark, Philly. Philly. Yeah, you make or, it like your middle name or something like that. Yeah, and then just go by. Or like, you or you go name. really off the wall and you just pick like a totally different city. So like not even one. And like you just I, I, my nickname's Albuquerque, even though my name is Dallas. Like in Forrest Gump, when he says that, like oh Detroit, he was from Texas, and you know that's I think that's where you got to take this one. But uh, on that note, oh no, wait. <laughs> Wrong one. Not all falls down. Closing time. We will be here on Wednesday in some capacity, in some way. We're going to have a lot of fun. That will be uh, my last hosting gig here at 91.1 WRMU. So we, we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to maybe reminisce a little bit about some fun Mount Union uh, or moments in Mount Union athletics. Uh, bring in some people. Maybe we'll have some game, play some trivia games or something like that. Give away some WRMU apparel to the loyal Raiders Zone fans. But we will be live at eight in some capacity. I will be behind a mic. I don't know who else will be behind the other ones, but we will tweet out updates as the days follow. So for Brendan, for Barry, for Unk, I'm your host Chris Coleman. We would all like to thank you for tuning in tonight and having a little bit of fun with us. Have a good night, everybody.